Hi, Dick Rauscher here. Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Stony Hill Nugget number 259, Marriage, the Journey into Intimacy and Self-Awareness. As a life coach, I get a lot of questions about marriage. Um, and when I was in uh, working as a therapist for about 20 years, 25 years, um, probably half of the work I did was in helping people work out marital issues. So today, this article is kind of tapping into a kind of a summation of some of the insights that I uh, try to teach people who are having problems with uh, relationships with other people, particularly marriage. This is a quote that I probably heard a hundred times, maybe 500 times. It was a lot, <laughs> let's put it that way. People would come in to my office or they would call up on the life coaching and they would say, I can't believe it. I got a divorce three years ago and I ended up marrying the same SOB that I divorced. Or the guy will come in and he'll say, I can't believe it. I got a divorce two years ago. I met another woman and I ended up marrying the same wicked witch of the West. Now, these people weren't kidding. <laughs> they were really sharing a deep uh, struggle and, and pain as to how they got back into the same situation again. Okay, So let's take a look at what happened. First of all, marriage is not about just love. You know, marriage, an important part of it, is love. But um, I think it's Bradshaw that made the comment one time. He said, when you're at a cocktail party and you look across the room and you lock eyes with that person on the other side of the room, that stranger you've never met before, and your breathing gets a little deeper and your hands begin to get a little sweaty, and he said, you, you really are attracted to that person. He says, run like hell. He said, get out of there. He said, because you just met someone who intuitively touched one of the wounds that you carry from childhood. It's kind of a funny quote, but it, there's a lot of truth in it. And here's why. When... When we get married, we don't know it, but an unconscious reason for getting married, or in other words, a motivation, if you will, for getting married, is that we want to heal the wounds of our childhood. This is a major issue. And if we can understand that issue, whether it's marriage, whether it's a friendship with some other person, we always have an unconscious agenda. And that agenda is to, our, the, the little person, the inner child says, oh, maybe this person can help me deal with that wound from childhood. Now, none of this is conscious. If it were, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the problem. People wouldn't be making this statement about the Wicked Witch and the SOB. But it is happening, and here's why. I'm, I'm going to be kind of generalizing here a little bit, but it applies to just about all of us if we really think about it. There are two kinds of people, two kinds of childhood that we grow up with, okay? One is we grow up in a family where we're kind of enmeshed. In other words, everybody's into everybody else's business. There's very little autonomy. There's a lot of criticism. No matter what you do, it's never right. Um, people telling you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, etc. Okay? The other person typically grows up in an invisibility family. And that's a family where they're not noticed, no one listens to them, they're kind of invisible, uh, they don't get a whole lot of love, they're, they're just kind of there, but no one makes a big deal about them. Okay? So it's almost the opposite, where this person's getting way too much attention, this person's not getting anywhere near enough, okay? So the wounds that we carry out of childhood is the wounds of invisibility or the wounds of enmeshment, 
okay? And all of us fit typically in one category or the other, more or less, okay? So, let's move on. We got the wounds of childhood. This is, these are the um, ways to understand those wounds. Let's look at marriage itself. Well, first of all, we are looking for the person who is going to solve those wounds, okay? And what are we looking for? We're looking for a perfect relationship, a perfect marriage, and we want it with the perfect person that we can fall madly in love with. Now again, it's not all about love. It's about healing those wounds. So what happens is that what we begin to recognize, and this is the important insight here, is that there is no perfect marriage, and all of the work in every relationship, especially marriage, is learning to do our own self-work. Okay? Now, here's how it begins to unfold. Our partner, who we thought was perfect, or our friend, who we thought was perfect, uh, the relationship that we thought was really perfect, okay, turns out not to be. And then either they blame us for something, or we have a tendency to blame them for something that they did or didn't do, okay? So what's really important here is to recognize that when people uh, are, are in a relationship and they have not yet done their self-work, they're going to tend to blame. And here's the reality, the insight that if you can grab hold of will really be helpful. And that is, trust me, it's not always about you. And it's not always about them. Okay? So when someone, when we blame someone else for the wounds, it's not them. It's our wounds. We carry our own wounds into the relationship from childhood. And when someone else blames us, it's not about us. What they're really saying, they're, sh they're sharing their wounds from their childhood and they're asking us to fix them. Or we're blaming them and we're telling them to fix our wounds. The reality, nobody can fix the wounds from childhood in the other person. Nobody can fix our wounds and we can't fix theirs. And the moment we try, we're going to enter burnout. Because no matter how much you give up yourself, you'll never fix their wounds. They have to do that work. And vice versa now. Okay? This always comes back to us now. Vice versa. Okay? The reality is, is that when we come out of childhood we have work that we have to do, and that is to heal the wounds. And we have to do our own wound healing, okay? We can't fix another, and we can't blame another. So we can't ask them to fix and blame them when they don't, okay? It will not work. That's pushing the river again, okay? That metaphor that uh, we're pushing reality, and that never works. Okay. Now, let me unpack this a little bit because this is a really helpful model. Uh, this is probably one of the more important models that I worked with as a, both as a therapist and today now as a life coach. And that is called the Velcro Loop. And this is almost unbelievably simple. And yet, if you really get your head around this particular model, you'll be astounded how much insight you'll get from it. We have two people now. Okay, the first one, we're going to call them the distancer, and the other is the pursuer. Now, obviously, the distancer is going to be the person who came from the enmeshed family, and the pursuer is going to be the one who came from the invisible side of the family, the invisible family, okay? Now, what's important is to recognize what are the needs of these people. Well, the distancer who got way too much, much enmeshment, in other words, people telling them what to do and when to do it, they got too much attention, okay? 
So what they really need is appreciation, not attention, okay? They need to be appreciated. The pursuer didn't get enough closeness, so they need intimacy. So we have a person who needs appreciation and a person who needs intimacy. Now, this can start, this dance of the Velcro loop can start with either person. So let's just pick up and we'll say, okay, these two people met at that cocktail party, right? The one where our hands got sweaty and our breath got deep and we fell madly in love with, okay? So this person begins to shower all sorts of what? Attention, because they want intimacy, they want closeness. So they just effusively offer that to the distancer. And the distancer begins to respond, and this pursuer says, oh, that person loves closeness too. I think I'm madly in love. The problem is, it isn't intimacy they are responding to. It's the appreciation that the pursuer is offering. So, now the dance gets complicated. So the pursuer needs the closeness, okay? And their fear, um, let me go one more step before I try to show you the, the loop, the dance. The fear is criticism. So the distancer fears being criticized or not appreciated. And the pursuer fears abandonment or lack of intimacy, right? So. In a normal relationship, this madly in love stage, which lasts usually about six months, okay, in a marriage, can't be sustained because we're all human. Remember, there's no such thing as a perfect person. Eventually, both of us, whether we're pursuers or distancer, we're going to begin to push each other's buttons. Absolutely inevitable. You can't not have that happen, okay? So, the pursuer begins to recognize that the other person that they thought loved all closeness is moving away from them and they get scared. In other words, they begin to fear abandonment and how do they handle it? What's their defense? The pursuer will get a little bit angry. They'll get a little pushy a little critical, a little bit aggressive. You're not paying enough attention to me. So when that happens, they put that energy up on the distancer, right? The distancer now in this case says, oh, whoa, I'm being criticized. The one thing I fear the most, I'm not being appreciated. So what is the defense of the distancer? Well, that's simple. They withdraw and they shut down, right? But when that energy goes up to the pursuer, the pursuer says, oh, I'm really not, I'm really being abandoned now, okay? They're going away from me. And this person is likely to get quite angry, quite aggressive, which of course comes up here and comes across as criticism. So this person defends by going even further away. Now, why is this called a Velcro loop? Because in a marriage, unlike a, just a friendship where you can just say adios to the other person, in a marriage, you're kind of stuck. You're inside this box. So the way to picture it is we take a box called marriage, okay? Just picture this as the lid. And we Velcro the pursuer down here, or the, the distancer, I mean, down here, and we Velcro the pursuer in here, okay? And they can't get away from each other without a divorce, okay? At least that's what they think. Uh, uh, we're going to take a look at that in a minute. But at any rate, we now have a marriage box where they're trapped inside here, and this energy is cranking up. The pursuer is feeling more and more abandoned, more and more critical. The distancer is feeling more criticized, not appreciated. They're going further away. And pretty soon you have a, a level of pain that people can't handle. The pursuer 
feels totally abandoned and the, the, the um, distancer feels totally unappreciated and the next thing you know they're filing for a divorce. So what's the solution? It's really simple. It's not just about love, it's about healing the wounds of, of childhood. The minute these two people can understand that and that there's no such thing as a perfect marriage, no such thing as a perfect person, and that the wounds are always self-work. You cannot ask your partner to heal your wounds and you can't heal theirs, okay? The minute you begin to recognize that it's really when your partner is getting all cranked up or going away, it's not always about you, it's about the dynamic that's going on in this Velcro loop. It's this dance, okay? And this dance continues to increase until we're willing to become self-aware. Now, how do we do that? And here's the summation of it, okay? Now, this, again, works with any relationship. It works with friendships. It works with uh, marriages. Um, if you're in relationship with another human being, this dance is going on somehow, okay? And typically, when we break up with another person, it's because we're blaming them because they hurt us. They didn't. They may have pushed some buttons, but they didn't do the hurting. The hurting, we brought that into the relationship from childhood. So, what do we want to do? Look inward. Marriage is an opportunity to do inner work, okay? To become self-aware to become self-transformed, to take and rewrite the, the story of childhood, okay, that we were invisible or we were abandoned or whatever, okay? We all have a different story, a different story, but we all have a story, and it all comes from childhood. The minute we can begin to recognize that this is really what's happening, and this is why it's happening, Okay, it's the, we're trying to heal the wounds from childhood. The, the minute we can recognize that and start to do our own work, and being um, in therapy can be helpful, uh, talking with good friends who are aware of this kind of stuff can be helpful. There's a lot of different ways, but it all is about self awareness. What happens then is we can unhook from the pain of childhood or the pain of our past. Okay, what an amazing opportunity if we understand what's going on in this dance. Okay, it's a great opportunity to create happiness and love in our life. Okay, true love, real love, not with a perfect person, but with another flawed human being. How do we do that? Real easy. It's not always about us. Okay, and we have to listen as our partner or our friend, the other person in the relationship, does their own work. And the more we can listen without taking everything personal and recognizing that they're just working out their wounds from childhood, the minute that begins to happen, all of a sudden, this energy that started to get out of control, okay, inside this box called marriage or friendship, it begins to dissipate. So the way I like to look at it, and to me, it, this is kind of the summation of this article, is that I always was impressed with old folks that would be walking down the street, okay? Obviously old, and I won't say how old because I'm probably one of those people now, but holding hands with their partner and what I understand today is that those two folks weren't perfect and they didn't have the perfect relationship. They had to work it through, but they've come to the conclusion that this partner that they're with, that they're holding hands with, walking down the street as elderly folks, are choosing to be with that particular imperfect person and that that's the person they would most want to spend their life with. Okay? 
What a great way to think about a relationship or about marriage. It's not perfect. They've done their work. They've, they've recognized that their partner is not perfect, but they really wouldn't want to be with anyone else. There's no other imperfect person in the world that they would rather be holding hands with. If this is helpful, feel free to pass it on to someone that, that you think might be able to use this information. And if you do, thanks for supporting the work we do here at Stony Hill. So have a great week. Remember, you're not perfect. Your partner isn't perfect. And you both have to learn to do your own work. And if you do, what a gift you give each other and yourself.